Hey, how's it going? Today we're taking a closer look at the alpha-2 agonists and their place in ADHD treatment. Let's start with a quick overview. So the alpha-2 agonists that we're discussing today are guanfacine extended release, known as Intuniv, and clonidine extended release, known as CAPTE. These medications were approved for ADHD treatment over 10 years ago, but there were three things initially that held back their use. First, they're less effective than stimulants, which have an effect size of 0.8. These medications have an effect size of about 0.5. Second, they're only approved for use in kids and adolescents. And third, until recently, they were quite expensive. But things have changed. The extended release versions are now generic and more affordable. And we've seen their first major trial in adult ADHD. If you want some helpful fact sheets for these medications, head on over to thecarlatreport.com slash alpha2 and we'll send them right over to you. So let's give a brief history of these medications. So these medications were initially developed in the 1960s to treat high blood pressure, but they fell out of favor for use in hypertension when newer blood pressure medications came along. That's because these medications are sedating and can cause a rebound hypertension if the patient stops the medications. Let's talk about the mechanism of action of these meds. So the antihypertensive effect occurs because they bind to presynaptic alpha-2A receptors. This occurs in the vasomotor center. Because these alpha-2A receptors are presynaptic, they act as autoreceptors and overall decrease norepinephrine through negative feedback. But in the prefrontal cortex, they bind to postsynaptic alpha-2A receptors. Clonidine stimulates all three subtypes, 2A, 2B, and 2C, whereas guanfacine acts predominantly on the 2A receptors. This actually strengthens norepinephrine signals in the prefrontal cortex, which are critical in mediating attention and behavior. It's probably more complex than this, but this is a helpful starting point. So let's move on to their use in ADHD. So guanfacine and clonidine have never actually been directly compared, but they appear to be equally effective for ADHD based on the individual trials. Both medications are approved as standalone treatments and as add-ons for stimulants. Unlike the stimulants, which work right away, the effects of these medications build up gradually over two to five weeks. Now, when these medications are used with stimulants, they only provide a small additional benefit. But there is evidence that combining the two types of medications improves tolerability. And that's because stimulants are less likely to cause hypertension, anxiety, insomnia when they're taken with an alpha agonist. And on the flip side, alpha agonists are less sedating when they're paired with a stimulant. In one study, when guanfacine was used alone, 59% of patients reported sedation, somnolence, or fatigue. But this dropped to just 11% when it was taken with a stimulant. So let's talk about adult ADHD. So these medications were initially only FDA approved for childhood ADHD, so they weren't used as much in adults. But recent studies are beginning to look at their efficacy in adult populations. Until recently, we only had one well-designed study that looked at guanfacine in adults with ADHD. This 12-week randomized control trial showed that guanfacine extended release outperformed placebo with an effect size of 0.5. Now let's move on to their side effects and alternative uses. So a key difference between guanfacine and clonidine is that guanfacine is less sedating. On the flip side, clonidine has been studied more in psychiatric disorders that occur alongside ADHD. These include PTSD-related nightmares, irritability and autism, bipolar mania, self-cutting and borderline personality disorder, nicotine cessation, alcohol withdrawal, and opioid use disorders. It's worth keeping this in mind because a lot of these conditions can worsen with stimulant use. Common side effects of the alpha-2 agonists include dry mouth, constipation, fatigue, sedation, low blood pressure, slowed heart rate, and QTC prolongation. However, alpha agonists can help with physical symptoms like tics, excessive sweating from SSRIs, excessive salivation from clozapine, perimenopausal hot flashes, and restless leg syndrome. It's helpful to know that the side effects are most common during initiation and when you increase the dose, and that they're dose-related. It's still important to check heart rate and blood pressure whenever you start the medication or increase the dose. On the flip side, if you're trying to target anxiety or agitation, daytime dosing may be useful here. And it's important to let patients know that if they stop the medication suddenly, it can cause rebound hypertension, which is worse with clonidine. Now let's talk about the formulations and pharmacokinetics. Now both the immediate release and the extended release forms of guanfacine and clonidine are effective, but the extended release versions are probably a better starting point. Clonidine extended release and instant release are usually taken twice a day 
because they have a 12 hour half-life. Guanfacine has a longer half-life of about 16 to 18 hours, so it can be taken once daily. Whenever you're switching between the instant and extended release, remember that only 60 to 75% of the extended release is absorbed. Now let's talk about drug interactions and withdrawal. So guanfacine is more prone to drug interactions because it's metabolized by CYP3A4 and 3A5. So inhibitors of 3A4 like grapefruit juice will increase the levels. Clonidine is less prone to drug interactions, but it's more likely to cause rebound hypertension if you stop it abruptly. So if you ever do plan on stopping either of the medications, it's important to taper slowly. So how do you choose between guanfacine and clonidine? Child psychiatrists tend to prefer guanfacine because it's less sedating. But for adult psychiatrists, clonidine has more potential benefits in complex comorbidities. So what's the Carlat verdict? These medications have modest benefits and do come with side effects. While guanfacine and clonidine are not ideal for generalized use in ADHD, they do have a niche in a handful of comorbidities that can worsen with stimulants, including PTSD, bipolar, borderline personality disorder, and addictions. If you found this information helpful, definitely head on over to thecarlatreport.com and consider subscribing to our newsletter. Thanks for watching.